For this assignment, we're going to be going back to one of those images that you used the filters on, and we're going to be creating a kaleidoscope effect with that image. So the first thing that I'm going to need to do, because we saved this as a Photoshop file, um, over here I have multiple layers. So I'm going to start off by combining these layers together by doing something called flattening. So I can do that by right-clicking on my Layers panel and then choosing the Flatten Image op option. What that's going to do is it's going to go ahead and compress that filter and the background layer together so that they're one. So when I go to try to move this now, it's going to move correctly from one document to the other um, and it's going to all move together versus just pieces of your photo moving. So the next step from here is going to be to go ahead and crop your image, which we've done before, but over on your toolbar you're going to want to choose the crop tool and I'm going to go ahead and choose the height, width, and ratio, or excuse me, resolution option so that I can specify the size that I want. And I'm going to use a three and a half by five at 300 pixels per inch. So with that, depending on which way your photo goes, remember you always have the option of flipping your box by using those arrows in between. Um, and you can, you know, zoom in or out as long as you're not going outside of your picture space. So once I get that placed, I'm going to go ahead and double click to crop my image. Um, and it looks like it's shrunk really small because I have decreased the file size from the original state. Um, but remember, I can always use Command Plus to zoom in to be able to see that picture a little bit larger. So now that I've got this image cropped, the next thing that I'm going to do is open a blank canvas to work on. So I'm going to go up to File, New, and I'm going to get a dialog box here that allows me to set some. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and create a custom page, and I can do that. Um, I'm going to change this first from pixels to inches, and I'm going to use um, the printer paper size, which is going to be an 8.5 by 11 and then I want it to print correctly so I'm going to go ahead and change this to 300 for my resolution because that's proper print resolution and I'm going to go ahead and say create. So when I do that now I've got a blank canvas here and you'll notice that my picture is still open it's just opened in a separate tab from that blank canvas. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of the crop tool by choosing the move tool which is this top tool on my toolbar. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to separate my picture away from my blank canvas. And I do that by just grabbing the tab and pulling and just dragging that tab down. So now my picture is kind of free floating um, in its own window. Now, I'm going to click in the middle of my picture with my move tool, and I'm just going to move it to this blank document by dragging and dropping. And when I drop it, I now have that picture um, moved over onto this document. Now it's nice, as I uh, move my picture around, I have some guides that are gonna pop up, those pink lines. They won't actually show on your final project, um, but they're very helpful for getting things placed um, correctly. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make three more copies because I wanna create a brick of these images. So I'm gonna hit Command J, and then I'm gonna just move this over, and those guidelines are gonna help me to get my image centered at the top, and on the center of the page. Hit Command J again, make another copy, and I'm going to drag this one now down, making sure that those pink lines line up around the outside and across the middle. And hit Command J one more time, and I'm going to drag that photo over so now they all line up. So now I have all four of my photos here um, on my layers palette. So once you get to this point, you're going to have to decide which picture that you want to leave the same, and then we're going to do some rotating of the other images. So if this is the image that I'm going to keep as my original um, image, then I'm going to start flipping my other images to match. So I'm going to start by going to the right of that image. I'm going to click on that image layer, and it should, in my layers palette, now be highlighted and selected um, to work with. If that doesn't happen, you may check. You have this auto select option. If it's not clicked, then um, it doesn't allow you to use your move tool to select on um, each picture individually. You have to do that from over here in your layers panel. 
So check mark that auto select button and then click on the picture that you would like to change. And I'm going to use a transform command, um, command in the letter T on my keyboard, and it's going to give me those um, handles to where I could resize my image, but we're not going to resize it. Instead, we're going to flip it. So I'm going to right click, and when I do that, it's going to give me these options down here to flip vertically and horizontally. I'm going to start by doing a horizontal flip, which is going to make a mirror to my original. And once I flip it, I can go ahead and hit this check mark, and it'll place the image for me. Then I'm going to come down below. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click on the picture, hit Command-T, right-click on it. Only this time, instead of doing a horizontal flip, I'm going to do a vertical flip. Hit the check mark to place it. And then I'm going to come to the last picture. I'm going to use Command and the letter T. And for this one, I'm going to have to do both a horizontal and a vertical flip. So now I've kind of created this um, fun little kaleidoscope effect with my images. And um, I'm going to, to finish this part up of the assignment, I'm going to center these. And I'm going to do that by selecting all of my layers. So I'm going to hold the Command key down as I click on each of these layers. And then I can move them together to find center. And you should get that pink cross going through the middle, um, and that'll help you to know that you've found the center point on your paper. And from here, we're going to go ahead and do a save file, save as, and I'm going to go ahead and save it as Kaleidoscope 1, and I'm just going to save this out to my desktop for now, leaving it as a Photoshop document because we're going to come back to this in a couple of days and add some other effects that we need to be able to access these layers. So enjoy the starting of your Kaleidoscope project.